You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, YNR fans. It's Belinda from Soap Dirt, and we know that Jordan Howard is about to have her explosive finale on the CBS soap opera. Her reign of terror should end when February Sweeps shuts down, which is next week. Sweeps ends on Wednesday, February 28th. So we got about seven episodes, give or take, left. And I feel like before Jordan is done, we are going to have a body count. I suspect at least one person will die but possibly as many as three people. Let's talk about who might meet their maker before all is said and done. But if you have not, please click subscribe so you don't miss any of our wine, our updates. All right, given recent episode activity, the four people that I feel are first and foremost on Jordan's list of targets are Nikki Newman, Victor Newman, Victoria Newman, and of course, Claire Grace, aka Eve Nicole Howard. But I just don't think that the season CBS soap opera is going to kill off any of the core Newmans or Claire. You know, she is a de facto Newman who just came back from the dead. So I don't feel like they're going to take her out that quickly. Uh, I just don't think they're going to have Claire, you know, pass again. That would just be too devastating for Victoria. But, you know, it's never a good ending to a villain's run on a soap opera unless somebody kicks the bucket. Usually on YNR, the person that dies is the villain themselves. And I'm totally up for Jordan doing herself in or getting taken out as part of her end game storyline, whether somebody in the family takes her out, whether the cops do you know, however it happens, I'm game for that. I mean, she is not sane. She's not normal. And she is not redeemable. So there's no reason to keep her around. I do suspect Jordan might wind up dead. But I also really think we're going to get some fatalities with this storyline, but none of them that will thin the herd of front burner characters. I do not think Jordan will kill any contract players. But that doesn't mean she won't do some damage on her way out as everything heats up starting on Tuesday. So on Monday's episode, you're going to see Jordan Howard approaching Seth, who still has no last name, by the way, at the Empty Glass Dive Bar. And yes, his glass is empty because he has been boozing. He's completely drunk. So I just wonder how wise it was for Nikki to have invited him out to the ranch because he's clearly tipsy and should not be behind the wheel. And Nikki Newman alerted security that her AA friend is dropping by. So I'm assuming they're going to wave his car white right through. And I am very much worried that Jordan Howard will be stowed away in the trunk or the back seat under a blanket or something like that. And Victor's security team, of course, will not notice that the scariest woman in Genoa City has snuck her way onto the ranch. I mean... Maybe she won't stow away in the car and will just rely on Seth to lure Nikki away. But since Victor has locked his wife down and basically grounded her to the ranch, it makes more sense for Jordan to come there to start her final revenge scheme. So spoilers for this Wednesday say that Nikki Newman falls into a trap. And of course, it's one set by Jordan Howard. And Seth is an unwilling accomplice. That poor guy is so drunk. He does not even know that he is being conned by this awful woman, Jordan. He does not seem like somebody who would willingly get involved in something that would hurt Nikki. He does seem to care about her. And Seth considers her a friend who has been an ongoing part of his sobriety story struggle. And because of all that, I definitely feel like Seth is one of the possible victims that Jordan Howard might kill during her final episodes on the CBS soap opera. I mean, they haven't even bothered to give Seth a last name. And to me, that's a warning sign that you are completely disposable, like those extras that always had the red shirts on on Star Trek. You know what I mean? So another person that I fear could fall prey to Jordan's violent final days in Genoa City is Claire's father, Victoria's ex-husband, Jordan's nephew, none other than Cole Howard himself. He seems like a perfectly nice guy, but they have not done enough character development with Jay Eddie Peck's role to have me believe that they mean for him to stay around and be a meaningful part of Claire or Victoria's lives. Just because they've done nearly nothing with Cole other than have him in occasional scenes with Victoria and Claire, you know, otherwise he's unseen or in the periphery, you know, and 
And the bottom line is there was no reason to ever bring him back to the CBS soap opera. They could have done this plot without him at all. So for all those reasons, I feel like there's a ticking clock counting down to the end of Cole. And yes, 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 I do think his insane aunt would kill him in a heartbeat. So I suspect that both Seth and Cole might die trying to defend someone that Jordan is trying to hurt. Seth would definitely get between Jordan and Nikki, I think, whether he's drunk or sober. I don't think he's a bad guy or anything like that. I just think he's haunted by his demons, but he does have a long friendship with Nikki. And I think he's going to be stunned when he finds out this woman, Jordan, is the one who pushed Nikki off the sobriety wagon and sent her back to drinking. And I could definitely see Cole Howard being harmed if he got between his nutty aunt and his daughter or his ex-wife or his ex-mother-in-law, who, by the way, also happens to be his ex-lover. I wonder if Jordan knows Cole used to sleep with Nikki. I mean, it's all so strange. At any rate, I definitely feel like Seth and Cole are on borrowed time at this point. It would be a real shame, I think, to have a villain as psycho as Jordan if she doesn't kill anyone before she leaves town. So those are two of the three people I mentioned that might die before Jordan Howard leaves Young and the Restless. The last one that was on my mind that might die is Jordan herself. Sometimes, you know, it's good to let villains live so they remain a constant shadowy threat, whether they're in jail or in exile or just ran off. I mean, guys like Marco Anacelli and Ian Ward spring to mind. But, you know, in many cases, it's good to give the fans closure and just go ahead and kill off the bad guy or girl. And that seems more likely to me where they are headed on Young and the Restless. Like when they killed Ashlyn Locke and Cameron Kirsten, they seem to be in this zone of just killing off the villain. So I am 100% fine with them killing off Jordan, although I am enjoying the heck out of Colleen Zank on YNR. She is so bad and I hate it because I know she can't stay forever. And I just wonder how many people Jordan is going to take out with her when she goes. So, hey, please click subscribe if you haven't already and definitely drop your comments on who you think Jordan might kill on her way out the door and be sure and come back often because we talk young and the restless here seven days a week. And as always, I'm your host, Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 